Alright, hey folks, this is Dave again, um, working on the Kawasaki 1500. Today I'm going to show you how to put a clutch in. Uh, my bike's got about 57,000 miles. I've been pulling the trailer. I'm pulling the trailer with it. Uh, it's starting to slip when I really get on it, so I bought some new clutch discs. I went ahead and bought factory ones, got a pretty good deal on them. Uh, versus aftermarket, I didn't know which was better. But I had good luck with the factory ones, so I stuck with them. But anyways, let me show you what I got started done here. Alright, all I did over here so far was just remove the floorboard on the side here. This floorboard here, I took that off. I thought I could squeeze this cover off and you know, get to all these screws here without having to uh, take this part of the frame off, but I'm unsuccessful. I got one screw right here. I backed it out, touching the frame, so I'm going to have to take a section of the frame out. And if you see my other videos, you know that the frame is bolted right here. And that section of frame runs up. And up in here, I got you can see these two bolts here. And that section of frame will come out. Now I got that highway bar on there, probably a little bit of a hassle, but well I've also took off the one exhaust pipe too. You can see that I took the exhaust pipe off. I didn't have to take the other one off. These are Vance and Hines pipes, so, but anyways, and there's the pipe right there. Okay, I'm going to get this cover off, like I said, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of the frame off, a few bolts, I'm going to take this cover off, and then I'll show you what I got in part two. Alright, see y'all in a minute. Okay, I'm back here with the 1500, it's only been about 10 minutes since the last video. I'll tell you about taking that piece of frame off. Well, here's the piece of frame here. See that label there? Now, the thing I forgot to say was there was two bolts on the frame here that went to the motor mount that's up here in the front. And I'll show you right here on the frame. You see this bolt here? That's bolts the engine. These two bolts here for the motor mount. Now, because I had the highway bars, I had a little spacer and whatnot in there, I had to unbolt that. And then there was one little screw that went to the bottom of the uh, for the support, you see that hole right there, that was a 10 millimeter head bolt, took that out, and the radiator sticks through a hole, a rubber grommet, right there, you just had to pull and drop it down, so the frame's out of the way now, no big deal, here's that bolt I couldn't get to a few minutes ago, easy peasy, you know, the, the engine mount's on the other side, and the back engine mount right here, uh, right there, it will still hold the engine up, so it's not going to fall down. When you put that frame piece back in, you're going to have to manipulate this a little bit, a little tweaking, get them bolts aligned in there, but not much. So I'm going to zip these bolts out of here, let's get this cover off, and let's go on and see what the clutch looks like. Alright, here's that uh, clutch covers off. Um, just those screws and it comes right off. You get a washer here that falls off this little clutch here for your uh, starter. But anyways, as you can see, this is the end of your crankshaft. No, this is the end of your crankshaft. I'm sorry. And you got some timing gears here. That's for your water pump. Um, your chain back in there is for your... Anyways, we'll get to the clutch. Alright, you get this clutch off of here. As you can see under the side, these are your clutch plates here. Metal, fiber, alternate. You notice there's no bolt in the center. Uh, what we're going to do here is there's a snap ring. You see right there, that little snap ring. We're going to pop that snap ring out. And then you'll see the bolt. Then you'll see it behind there. But I'm going to pop that off. Matter of fact, I'll do that right now. I'm going to set the camera down for a minute. Get a screwdriver in there. Alright. Let's see what I got here. Pop that little snap ring off with a screwdriver. If you've got a little spot here, you can get a screwdriver up underneath of it. It is off. So you got a little washer in there. And you got a bearing. That bearing is because that shaft pushes out. When you push the clutch, the hydraulic slave cylinder on the opposite side pushes this shaft out, separating these clutches. So be careful of that. Just set that right in there. Then hurt to put a couple drops of oil on that too when you stick it back together. There's that big nut I was telling you about. I'm going to grab an impact, excuse me, get it off. When we put it back on, we'll torque it on though. But uh, 
I'm gonna take that off and this should come right apart. So let me get back to you in a minute and grab my impact and we'll continue. Alright, use the impact on there and uh, zip that nut off for two seconds. Set that down. Then you're gonna see you've got this spacer here. There's some rings in here and these there's some washers behind this. When you put this together, there's a little trick to it. I'll show you. Put these down. These are called bevel washers, Bellevue washers or something. They actually got a curve to them. And when you put two of them together, one's curved up, one's curved down, you can see in the middle the space between them and the edges, the outside edges are touching. It's real important we put those back together. They act like a spring. You got to put them in in the right order. And that one was about the bevel going down, uh, tilted in. So make sure we put those. So I just set them right there, right back in the same order. Keep them together. Wham, bam. Now your clutch cover will come off here. This first uh, part of your clutch. And you see that's got teeth in there. And your clutch is actually the clutch discs are these here. These are your fiber plate. The fiber plate grabs the exterior of the drum. As you can see, these are all fiber plates up here. The metal plates in between, let's take that one off, have teeth that grab the center. You can see they got teeth. And when you squeeze them all together, kind of like a brake pad, away you go. And when you put when you press the clutch in, your this outer uh, drum will spin, but the center will stay stationary. And the center part is what drives the transmission. Okay, that's all there is. Taking it apart, and we're just gonna take our new clutch discs, our new ones. We're gonna soak them in oil, and we're gonna put them back together the same order, and stick this back together. So let me uh, put this together up to the point where we're at now, and we'll stick it back. Alright, I took my clutch part here and I found out that the clutch plates, these are the, are the the ones that came out. I took some micrometers. These are my one inch micrometers and I measured the old the, the old plates, measured the new plates, found out there's very little wear but my clutch was still slipping. This is the plates off, these are the metal plates hanging here. They're already clean, ready to put back together. But anyways. I'm trying to understand how this clutch works. Usually, you got a roll of springs. Well, in this case, this clutch uses a spring washer of a sort. Here it is, right here. You can see it's concave, and that puts the pressure to squeeze all of them clutch plates together. And then, when you engage the clutch, it pushes out and releases the pressure. Anyways, I read a few articles. And it was talking about some wear marks. I don't know if we can see this getting the light here. You can see the shiny. Let me set it down. Right on the edges, you can see there's wear right tip of my finger. We got some wear. Not enough pressure. So I went ahead and that rubs on that lip right there where my thumb is. You see it right there. Why well, I went with it. I changed the design slightly. I went to a 2005, this is a 2003, bought that same piece here. It's there, except for this one's got a little washer with little teeth on it. And what those teeth will do, you know what the light is here, those teeth will do is oh, this uh, spring washer will fit down in with those teeth. Let's see if we can get locked in there. Okay, there we go. And that washer will keep it from uh, wearing that edge there. And I also bought a Barrett spring. Here's the or Barnett. That's the part number. That'll take the place. So between the two changes I made here, first of all, I'm not going to get that wear at the edge. At the edge again. That wear right at the edge. I'm going to tip my finger there. I'm not going to get that wear no more because that new washer is going to fit in those grooves and take care of that in second and I just did that by buying that one piece that was different for 2005 this piece with that washer or spring or whatever this piece here and you see the teeth 
and them teeth will all, as you can see, let them turn it over. They fit right in there like that, lock in there. It disperses the weight so it doesn't wear that edge. Anyways, we're gonna change the spring with that, with that uh, burnout spring. I think we're gonna put the old clutches back in. Typically on a clutch, a motorcycle clutch, you have a roll of springs that go around the outside through a cover, which puts pressure on there, a bunch of springs. This has springs in it, but these springs here, I've done some research and found out that's a, uh, it helps keep your back wheel from locking up. It allows it to slip, I guess. I ain't really figured it out 100%, but anyways, those aren't, those are the springs I thought of was what I needed, but turns out it's not at all. So, meanwhile, I'm going to clean up all my old gas material and uh, start putting this back together. See what happens. I'll get back to you. Alright, I got it in there. Got my clutch back together. There's that new Burnett spring. And as you can see, that outer ring that I was showing you that fits in those notches versus the old one. It's just single. And those uh, edges of them teeth would wear on that. You can see the, I guess you, I don't know if you can see the difference or not. Let's see here. You see the holes. I'll tight that one fits with that ring. Anyways, I think that's a better design to keep from wearing the edge of those teeth. I've already put the cover on. I've already had this. All right, sorry about that. My battery one did. Anyways, I got the cover on now. Got the spring on. I put some oil in there. Had a little trouble when I put that part we were talking about on there with that new spring. This new spring this is the old one with the old spring getting the nut in the center. You see, I got those splines in the center there, and it didn't quite want to mesh up there, so I had to tighten the nut a little bit, try to turn it, and then all of a sudden it, they caught and went on, you know, correctly. But you have to make sure the, the nut does, seems like it wants to stop. That means that those splines haven't gone over. I guess just because that new spring was so high, I did a look in the book, and there's a way to measure the height of the spring. Let's see if I can show you real quick. There's a service limit on it. And, uh, sorry about that, let me just show you right quick. Let's see where I saw that at. Should have had this prepared, but. Right here. Here's a picture of that spring. They got it laying upside down with the high, the higher on the outside, going straight edge across it. I flipped it over the other way. I used uh, digital uh, calipers, held it on there, and I did it on a flat piece of steel though, and ran them, ran them down until it touched, and measured the the height. And there's a note in the back here that tells you what the service limit is. And the service limit, I was just curious, clutch, look here, clutch spring height, uh, I'm, I was, 169 to 157 is the, 157 is the minimum, and I measured right at 157, 158, 159, so we know that this spring was wore out, I probably could have went with another factory one, I've already tried my clutch, and I'll do it now, I'll show you real quick. With that new spring, I'm going to pull the lever and I'll show you. You can see the clutch when it moves. Here. See a little bit of movement separating? Anyway, so it works. The lever is definitely harder to pull. I have this other 1500 Kawasaki, a 2005 model, matter of fact, and I can pull my clutch lever on this one, and uh, it's hat, you know twice as easy. But I don't think I'm going to have any more trouble with it slipping. And I have a trailer I pull with this bike, and it should make a big difference. Now I did buy 
a whole set of new clutches. But after measuring them, I know there was nothing wrong. My old ones were wore out. I may post these on eBay, or I may just hold on to them. But eight brand new fiber discs here. Paid a good amount of money for them. But I do pull a trailer with my bike. Got some stuff piled on it right now, but I pull this aluminum diamond plate trailer. And I don't think I'm gonna have any trouble with this any more slipping going on. I torqued it to 110 foot pounds. I got a piece of soft metal. I use this piece of, uh, I don't know, it's kind of aluminum or something. And you wedge it down. Really don't have good light, but with this gear, meets the gear, this gear, put it down in there as a wedge, and as you turn this, it'll catch, and you can use your torque. I used a snap on torque wrench. Torque to do 110 foot pounds. Then I backed up that, backed it up a little bit, took that spacer I put in there to lock it down. You don't need a fancy clutch holding device. I think on several of them, though, I've just used an impact. I, you know, but the right way to do is 110. That's how I did it. Anyways, now we're going to put it back together and we should be good. I don't think this thing's going to slip at all anymore. Uh, really, the only thing I left to do is put the clutch cover back on, put this section of frame back in. But you know, we talked about that before. There's that section of frame, and it's just not, it wasn't that bad a job. If you have any questions, you can send it in the comments. Um, and, uh, We'll go from there. Again, those springs, that, those small springs that I showed you in the back earlier, those springs are for basically if you downshift too fast, or if anybody's ever tried to push start one of these bikes, you know it doesn't want to push start because there's a clutch in there, and those other springs in there act as a one-way clutch. If the back wheel is pulling harder than the engine, this will slip. It's made to slip inside there. So, anyways, that's about the end for the end of this clutch video, and. Uh, Maybe we'll make a video on something else. Till next time.